displacement, you have to give a direction. So I, it, so I said east. It's not perfectly to the east, but I'm just trying to tell you that you have to have a direction because it's a velocity. Are you with me? Anything you measure to the right is positive. Anything that you measure up is positive. Down negative to the left is negative. Everybody knows that, right? That's what I'm trying to show there. Can't be clearer than this. And I have four of them pulled out, and I'll show you why. Now, on the first graph, have the time and I've four examples, that's all I did. Just four examples. This is plus four, this is plus three, minus four, minus three. Those are four examples for displacement, correct? Come on, easy. Now on the second one, Take a look. Don't be about, it's not about copying everything. It's about understanding. If I start from here, and everybody watching, start from here. Watch this. Go there. That's four meters. And then go all the way back and finish at negative four. Can you tell me the distance moved? Started from here and went four meters. And then all the way back up to negative four. What was the distance moved? I don't know if I put the same numbers because I can't see it yet. You see, but how much is it? Is it 12? Yeah, 12. Yes, the distance is how much? 12 meters. Now, what's the displacement? Wait, wait, I started from here, didn't I? And I finished here, correct? So when I ask you to find the displacement, all you got to do is go from the starting point to the finishing point. So that's my displacement. So go ahead, what's my displacement? Negative four meters. I forgot to record it. If I throw something up from here, goes up to a certain height and comes back, what's the displacement? Zero. Thanks. Zero. The displacement in that case is zero. If an object returns to its initial position, its displacement is always zero. All right, on the fourth one, redrawing it. Here it is. Now I move three meters up and then four meters from there. Don't say it, but can you find the displacement? Don't say it, write it down, Every, each person. So somebody's walking from here, walks three meters in that direction, and then four meters in that direction. The distance moved, everybody, what's the distance moved? Seven meters. Now the displacement, how many have it? Shout it. Five mangoes, five elephants. Five meters, not meter per second, it's displacement, it's five meters. Now, Samar, how did he get the five? It's a right angle triangle. You apply your theorem. What's the name of that theorem? Okay, what do you do? Square this, square this, add them, take the square root, simple stuff. That's why AC, which is the displacement, is only five meters. Distance is seven meters, displacement is five meters. Meter. And I am showing you how to get the displacement. Looks like we're just stuck on that thing. All right. So we move on. Doing something here. Watch, watch that graph come up, and I'm playing with it. I think I'm asking you to find the angle this time. Okay, so I wrote the whole thing again. Move it fast. That's there. Can you find that angle? Because when you're asked to find the displacement, you have to give a direction, correct? So go ahead, find that angle for me, everybody, please. Take your time. You do that from the triangle. Hopefully, I've taken tan. From that triangle, A, B, C. Oh, good. Tan theta is 4 over 3, and then that's 1.33, take the inverse of that, you're gonna get the angle as, come on, writing everything. And I stopped it there to give you a chance, you see? So what did you get? 53, oh, looks like I didn't even find it. I, I didn't know how to find it, so I didn't find it. Okay, that's not true, forgot to write it. What do you all get, 53? 
53.1 degrees okay so when you give your answer constant velocity there's only one equation if you know the velocity is not changing there's only one equation this is the equation uh, displacement is velocity multiplied by time so please go find this everybody find the answer to this you have two minutes if an object moves at three meter per second for one minute calculate its displacement all right that's the question go ahead write it write it so you can change the answer write it somewhere isn't this meter per second which means time has got to be in seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. So you got to do that. So if you did not, you got the answer wrong. Sorry. So one minute is 60 seconds. Multiply that, you get, you get 180 meters. Time's got to be in seconds. That's what I'm saying there. Time has got to be in seconds, cannot be in minutes. Right? Right? Any, any fine acceleration. Huh? What is the definition? Yeah? Change in velocity divided by change in time. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So here is a situation. Watch this carefully. I'm giving you the initial velocity. So an object started from rest, so the initial velocity is zero, right? Your, your question will say, an object starts from rest. That means the initial velocity is zero. And let's say the acceleration is something, but here is the formula. Isn't that change in velocity divided by change in time? What does the VF stand for? And that's the? So that's the change divided by the time. Okay, so that's the formula. It'll be on the formula sheet, and I'm giving you the final velocity. Assume it's 10 meter per second, and I am giving you the time, 20 seconds. And I want you to find the acceleration. It's not easy. Is it cool? So easy. Do it. You got the answer. 20. 10 minus 0 by 20. I'm not putting the units, I got tired, that's why. Now I did. Do you get 0.5 meter per second squared? Yes. So don't get confused with the units of acceleration. You have meter per second squared. That's acceleration. And I'm saying this is a very important equation. You're going to use that in the exam. Any questions? No. And I think uh, some students would have done this. Some would have just gone 20 times 10. And they would have got 200 meter. Anybody in the house who got 200 meter? Let's see your hand. Nobody? <laughs> Two. Okay. That's wrong. Okay. That is wrong. No, no problem. I have, to, I have to show you. Because you, you took the highest velocity. Remember, it was not always traveling at 10. It started at zero, and that was the highest velocity, correct? So you can't multiply that with 20. All right, so what is the answer you got? 100 meter? Is that what you got? 100, okay, that sounds correct. What did you do? You took the average velocity multiplied by the time. Okay, so here it is. This is how you do it. Take the average. How do you take the average? Add them, divide by 2, multiply it by the time, which will give you 0 plus 10 divided by 2, multiplied by 20, which is 5 times 20, which is 100 meter. Okay, so what if we use the other? Do you do it this way? Okay, so I wanted to show you that you can do it this way. Because you can make use of the acceleration. That's why I wrote that there. Did you see that? And that would once again give you 100 meter. So here are two very important equations. 
But what's the difference between these two equations? The difference is that in this one, you have to know the acceleration. See that? Isn't it because we found the acceleration that you could use it? Otherwise, this would have been easier if you were directly finding it. Okay. Same situation. Same situation. Now, I'm making you find the final velocity. So an object starts from rest. It's been traveling for 20 seconds with an acceleration of 0.5 meter per second squared. Isn't that the same question? Isn't it? Go ahead, find the final velocity. Go. Find the final velocity. You know the answer, don't you? What's the answer? 10 minutes. So get it. How do you get it? I won't give you more time. I want you to see this equation. That's why. Look at this equation. We've not used it yet. If you use that equation, you are going to get square root of 100, which is 10 meter per second. So what I was trying to do is to show you that we could use a new equation. Did you get it? All right, so we have all the equations now, and we are ready to move on. If you didn't finish writing, it'll be there. Let's change this background. All right, so that's a tower, everybody. If you've never seen one, and it's about free fall. So there is, that's delta y. So suddenly it became delta y. But why is it delta y now? Because it's along the y-axis. And if I drop an object, I hope you're listening. If I drop an object, what is its velocity? If I drop an object, what is its initial velocity? Thank you, zero. You see, some are thinking about negative 9.8, so they're getting confused between velocity and acceleration. When I drop, so when the problem says an object has dropped, its initial velocity is zero. Its acceleration is negative 9.8, I agree, so don't get confused. There you go, the initial velocity is zero, acceleration is negative. Why is it negative again? It's going down. And so if I ask you to find delta y, and I say it takes four seconds for it to get to the ground, can you find the height of the tower? Go ahead. You need 30 seconds to do that. Which is the equation that has all these four terms? Somebody. This one? See, I added the subscript y just to make you understand that's the initial velocity along the y-axis and that's the acceleration along the y. You see that? That's why I added the y there. So put it into that. The first term is, of course, 0 times 4. Oh, my goodness. This is not 0 0.4. It's 0 multiplied by 4, okay? That's 0. And half times negative 9.8 times Four squared. What do you get? Not yet? No, you got negative 78.4. Well, if I ask you for the height of the tower, it's going to be positive 78.4, but the displacement is negative. Why is it negative? Because it's going down. Any questions? An object is thrown up at 25 meter per second from the ground. Oh, it's thrown up vertically up, so it's thrown straight up. Find the time taken to return to the ground. Find the time taken to return to the ground. Now for this one, I'll give you two minutes. What is the initial velocity of this object? It's zero. This is a major mistake that students make. If the initial velocity is zero, the object cannot go up. It can only go down. Now, this problem says it was thrown vertically up at 25 meter per second. So we're not thinking about when you were holding it, 
we are thinking about when you let go. Are you with me? When you let go, the velocity is how much? Positive or negative? Why positive? Thank you. So that's V naught. Write it down. V naught is 25 meter per second. I know I'm shouting. How else can I keep you awake? Okay. V naught is 25 meter per second. Did you write that? What's the next term you know? You know A. What's A? How much is it? What is the acceleration? Negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Write that. Write that. Huh? Huh? Or uh, is there anything else that you know? Okay, what are you trying to find? What are you trying to find? So put T is equal to question mark. Put delta T or T is equal to question mark. I'm teaching you a process. Can you see that? You have to write everything, including what you're trying to find, because you need to see it. Now, all of the equations have four terms. We have got three which means there's one more term that's hidden that you know from the problem. This is what makes physics what it is. So not everything will be given to you. You have to visualize. Where did you start throwing it from? From the ground. Where did it return to? The ground. And did it, didn't it go vertically up? Which means it returned exactly to the same point where it started from. Come on. So what's the displacement? Thank you. Delta Y is zero. If you get that, then you have all the terms. I'm showing where you get zero right there. Delta Y is zero. You're trying to find T. What's the, what's the equation that involves these four quantities? Which is the equation that has these four quantities? V naught, A, delta Y, and T. It doesn't have the final velocity. Do you notice? Give me the equation. All the equations will be on your formula sheet. You just have to pick. Anybody? Is this the equation that has those four terms? Yes. Now it's the math part. Plug it in. Calculate. Be careful when you do the algebra. You know how I get the 4.9, don't you? 9.8 divided by 2, of course, with a negative. And then solving that, you have to take that to the other side, becomes positive. The negative here becomes positive, and I switch sides, then divide both sides by 4.9t. The t's cancel out. 5.0 seconds. What did you say your answer was? 5.1? It's 5.0 something. What is 25 divided by 4.9? Uh, we, we didn't, uh, I didn't uh, from not, uh, another. That. So the answer is not 5.0, it's 5.1 seconds. Thanks. All right, here is another one. An object is thrown up at 25 meter per second from, might be the same thing, from the ground. All right, vertically up. Find, let's wait for it. The time taken, maybe to reach the highest point. Yeah. Oh, to return? Okay, so I'm doing it a second way, maybe. We'll see. Maybe your method this time. I'm just trying to show. Yes. Are you all with me now? Do you know what I'm trying to do? What's the velocity at the highest point? Zero. Okay, so now I'm trying to find the time taken to get to the highest point. Why am I doing it two ways? So you see, actually you see the problem. You know, you understand. On the exam, please, there's only one way you have to do it. I changed the question. I said find the maximum height. Find it. Find the maximum height reached. Ding. So that's a different question. What is the equation that does not have time in it? Yeah, you have the square of the velocities, that equation. This one, this one doesn't have time in it. So you plug it in now and be careful in the calculation part. You will get it.
这一个。